Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norma Sanzo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. In the coming civil war, I shall stand with the Luna fans, and our fan raid shall burn the land. I see. Did you scan it? No, I didn't scan it. That means getting out of my protective bubble. <laughs> <laughs> so, anywho, in today's episode, we're going to review My Little Pony, Friends Forever, issue 38. This would be the last issue for the Friends Forever series. Sadness. Sadness abounds. I like Friends Forever. Yeah, I know. Friends Forever is a series that could have gone on forever. It's one of those things where you can combo A with B endlessly. Like, just imagine, oh, you can have an episode with Spike and Ember. Or Spike and Starlight. Or you want to go wild, you can have Sunset and Starlight. The combinations are endless. And it's also false advertising. Friends forever? And they're stopping? That's not forever. <laughs> false advertising. Oh, uh, no, but Silver, you know what they say. All good things must come to an end. So if I declare half the troubles of the world to be good things, does that mean they'll automatically end? Oh, no, nah, man. Like... I don't know if the if anyone has tried reverse psychology against the universe. Ah, oh, no, man. Like, if there's a buck to make, they'll keep on going. And talking about bucks? <laughs> no, that's terrible. But anywho, in this issue, Princess Celestia and Princess Luna's minor squabbling escalate just before they plan to participate in the sisterhood social. And also, this episode is Patreon sponsored by myself, Lag. Thank you, my friend. And, well, let's head into First Impressions. Silvo, what do you think? Well, this one's a lot of fun. This is a good way to end Friends Forever as we get the duality of the two princesses. And we get to see them, kind of like in A Royal Problem, we get to see them away from the public eye when they're when they're willing to be excited, to be a little bit vulnerable, to show their anger. Uh, I love Andy Price's artwork, and this is his first foray into writing for the comics, as far as I know. And so that's a pretty fantastic bit right there. So all in all, I thought it's a pretty wonderful way to cap off uh, both Friends Forever, but also to lead into Legends of Magic. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. Because after Friends Forever, there's Legends of Magic. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see that one soon enough. All things in time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And as for me, this comic was... F hmm. Okay, I'm conflicted with this one. I enjoyed the first read but one of the few things that I kind of had issues with is the writing and by that I mean that this comic here has a huge wall of text and usually for me when there's a huge wall of text it's the death nail you expect a grim reaper to be appearing over Andy Price's shoulder this story's time has come well, in all lessons, because this is the final issue, it has ended. <laughs> the thing is, I've read comics with far greater walls of text, so I guess it's all perspective. That's my only issue with the comics. But hey, the art was awesome. The situation or the whole thing could have been done well. I, I don't know. Uh, maybe when we get into it, you can explain a few things for me. And yeah, but anywho, that's quote-unquote my first impressions of this comic is a bit all over the place. But anywho, if you have not read this comic, go ahead. It's a fun read. It's a fun read. And if you're collecting the omnibus, you should. Because it's ended and you have a set. So, yay. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the book. The read is fun. So, we start off the comic with our main butler, Kitsubit. Kibitz. Kibitz, yes. Kibitz, he's probably one of the favorite characters to come out of the comics for me. This prim and proper butler who can actually make the princesses cower in fear. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, yes. He is awesome. So, in the first place, we have Kibitz here talking about how his family's been working with the princesses for generations and how awesome they are working together. They're kind of the total opposite, but they're part of the same coin and whatnot. Until they explode a kitchen. Yep. And they, well, they got mad at each other and they just scream like they are at odds with each other. And said title for this one is Battle Royale. Yeah. 
And I've got to say, Celestia has the more terrifying face as they emerge from the uh, ruined kitchen. She looks like the destroyer of worlds. This is what you see in the end times. Really? But Luna just looks so darn adorable in that chef's hat. <laughs> yeah. So both both can claim a title. Celestia for most terrifying, Luna for cute angry. <laughs> yeah. So before that, like any good comic, let's go back to the past. So in the past, or a few days earlier, Kibitz here is telling Celestia, you have... You have to do this, you have to do this, you have to do this. You're almost done. And Luna just skids in saying that they rescheduled the big event. So we can go to it. Yeah! And yes, they're so excited, they're just giddy. And this is what I mean by getting to see the royals outside of the public eye. They can allow their guard to drop a little. In fact, with Celestia especially, when she's willing to show that she's genuinely angry at you, in a weird way, that is a, a compliment. It means she cares about you enough to show this side. True, true. Which I guess is not to say she doesn't care about her other subjects, but she realizes she has to maintain an appearance. True, true. But here's my first problem with this page or this issue. It's that there's no real explanation of what's going on because what did they reschedule? What big event here? Because I got no idea what's even going on. Like, is some kind of dignitary thing being rescheduled or cancelled or whatever it is? Because they didn't even say that this is going to be for the sisterhood social. And unless you read the synopsis, you got no idea what's even, what is going on. For me personally, I don't read the synopsis because I want to be surprised. Fair enough. I view it as sort of the mystery. We, we want to know why they're, they're getting all gussied up and doing all these tasks together to clear the schedule. So I guess that's part of the mystery in my eyes and made me want to keep reading. Plus, I'm always a sucker for when I get to see Celestia and Luna performing royal duties and showing they do have a role, such as when they chase away Chrysalis. <laughs> All I could say is they're probably like, come back here and accept Starlight's friendship. Never! <laughs> uh, so true. But besides that, like, okay, uh, maybe you have a point. Uh, the big event is going to be a surprise for the reader. So yay, okay. And then we go to the next page where Kibitzia has uh, is saying that you have responsibilities that you need to deal with, and this event that you're going to is not part of it. You promise the citizens that you are going to do this and this. And here's my first problem: the third panel or the middle section of page was this uh, page five here has a big wall of text that is, to me, it's a big no-no in this kind of comics because it makes the readers don't want to read it because it's a huge wall of text. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I know it's daunting when when people like submit a fan work and it's just this un- or submit a post in a forum and there's no formatting or breaks to the text. It's intimidating to just even look at it. It's like, I can't even track what this person is saying. At the same time, you don't have to read every l word in that word bubble to understand that they've got a long list of chores. It might explain why the, the next line, you also promised to clean out the royal attic, <laughs> is in its own bubble. True. But it, it's one of those things where I bought this goddamn comic, I'm going to read every page of it. Ah! Yeah, but still, it's one of those things where it's daunting. Like, it's a wall of text that, like, maybe there's something really important in there that I need to read because it might go somewhere with it. And I don't know. It's it's a huge wall of text. Like, that, I, I don't really like that. But anywho, uh, Luna suggests that, hey, couldn't we just ask Twilight to do this? Like you do with everything else? <laughs> yeah. But... Celestia says, no, we made a promise to those ponies, so we must follow through. And Kabitsia says, besides, Miss Sparkle and her friends are off to San Palomino. Oh, how do you say that? Palo, Palomino. Huh, okay, San Palomino. I don't know what's that reference to. Our attending librarians bake off and rope trick conference at the Bird Sanctuary in San Palomino. So that takes care of Twilight, Applejack, and Fluttershy. Yep. 
and Pinkie Pie, Rarity, and Rainbow Dash are just going to join them. Well, not not quite Rarity. But anywho, uh, next page is going to be a montage. Everybody needs a montage. Because it starts with Chrysalis and she's running away. Yep. I don't remember how the song goes. Don't know what to say. Montage. Montage. <laughs> uh, but anywho, um, one of the bright ideas that who was it? I think the two sisters have is that, you know what? We should cut down our sleep time and do this work so we can go to said event. It's a good idea, right? Yeah, right idea. Yeah, let's go. I can only see good things resulting from this. Oh, no. That's not good. Because, <laughs> you know, cutting down on sleep. But come on. Mardi Gras, uh, Luna and Celestia. And then in their formal dress as they welcome... The yaks, the buffaloes, and the... Oh, it's King Aspen! And he's not attacking Canterlot for yep. once. Prince Rutherford is cool. <laughs> you say that, but... I do. It's Prince Rutherford. I'll, okay, I'll, I'll give you this. The uh, the comic Rutherford is infinitely, infinitely more likable than his uh, show True. counterpart. Oh, by the way, I have to point something out. Uh, if you see the, sec- the next panel to Rutherford, you get, you get a close-up at... Celestia and Luna's hair clip earring. I, I don't know what they I don't know what you want to call it. And it's Andy Price's cutie mark and uh who now Katie Cook's cutie mark. Oh excellent. A, a tribute to to what I consider to be a pretty dynamite team for the comics. Yeah, because I just noticed that in uh, one is a bat and one is a phoenix. <laughs> Sweet. It's excellent. Yep. So um, there's the event, and then the next panel is Luna trying to ward off bad dreams. And uh, if I remember way back when, you had an issue with this. I did. Was it? Be- what the was a vampire? Oh, the oh, dream thing. It's, because well, I know that Celestia says that she did. She monitored dreams for over a thousand years, mm-hmm. which unfortunately stands against the uh, the show saying. Celestia has no power in the land of dreams. Ah, yes, I do remember that now, yes. However, I believe that Do Princess's Dream of Magic Sheep only came out after this issue. Yes, that is true. Shortly after, if if, if memory serves. So it's not that Andy Price got it wrong, it's just that the facts changed. We were given a new bit of information that unfortunately works against this issue. But it doesn't mean that Celestia didn't try. <laughs> She tried, but it just didn't work. Yeah, but but I don't know. I just like the banter between the two sisters because you're taking all the fun out of this. My way worked fine for a thousand years. Sulking around in the creepy shadow is creepy and silly. I think you mean dramatic and cool. <laughs> but here we see tension rise because we get to see Celestia having time to herself. And she's enjoying the jazz music. It's so smooth. So very smooth. But Luna, Luna look, just needs a little time to herself. And for some reason, she has owls bracketing her room. What are they supposed to do? Are they like telling everyone back off? I'd like to speak to Princess Luna. Who? Me. Who? Me to see Princess Luna. Who? Princess Luna, the princess of the night. Oh, no. <laughs> and we're back to Owlicious without the annoying episodes. <laughs> yeah. But I do like the reference for Galloping Stone album. <laughs> Maybe it's Rolling Stones. Who knew Luna was such a metal hit or rock hit? <laughs> well, she's into rocks in the next in the next panel. Yep, yep. And this one hurt her feelings a bit because Celestia is denouncing her moon rock collection. And yeah, it, like oh man, look look at her sad face. Well, Luna's always been very sensitive about Celestia being the more popular princess. True. And also this one, maybe those moon rocks hold a special place in her heart. Considering she was banished in the moon, not (laughs) on the moon. Need to be clear on this. True that. You know, that's one of my peeves. Uh, True that too. Oh, please excuse my language. (laughs) Uh, But still, we go to the next panel and here starts the confusion. So why why don't you take over for a bit? Because I am so confused with this one. All right. So... It's not totally revealed right away, but they've received strawberries laced with magic. 
which, you know, if this were like the 60s, that'd be a whole different meaning. But basically, Kibitz took a, spe a spell to Crystal Ball, a gypsy-styled pony in Canterlot. At least I'm assuming it's in Canterlot. Where she makes a special potion into the strawberries that they will depower the princesses. They will no longer be the titans of uh, flight and strength and magic. All for this big event. They are, in essence, leveling the field. And this is known by the, the problem. And this is known by the princesses, right? It is known by them and by Kibitz. What they don't know is that Crystal Ball decides that she knows better than the client, and therefore she's going to add some extra bits to spice up this potion. One of which is that it will actually increase their competitiveness and hostility. Ergo, everything we see of Celestia and Luna from this point forward. They're arguing, their their tension. It's going to be the result of an outside influence messing with their emotional status. And I'm not as big a fan of this because once you have a third party to blame, it's harder to know the sincerity. Case in point, I'm going to go outside Pony for just a All sec right. here. I was re-watching clips of the Justice League uh, cartoon. One of them was an episode where the League temporarily broke up because Gorilla Grodd, a telepathic gorilla, only in comics, had been increasing their aggression. And so they were all saying things that normally they wouldn't to one another. And as a result, uh, at the end, when they've revealed, Flash tries to say, but that wasn't us. And uh, his friend, the Martian Manhunter, says, we meant every word we said. And Green Lantern's like, well, then all we can do is apologize and move forward. And that's hard. It's like, it's something you wouldn't say in normal conversation. It's something you wouldn't do if you had full awareness of yourself and full filters on. It doesn't mean it's not a part of you, but wanting to protect the other person's feelings is also a part of you. That is true, that is true, and I can see that. And yeah, this was not clear to me. And also I find the gypsy uh, dialogue very annoying. I, I know what Andy Price is going for, but for a person who is not native in English, I find it very annoying. Well, uh, speaking as someone whose English is his secondary language, bad English is my first <laughs> language, uh, I too struggle at times. You have to sort of read it, even say it aloud. Fe, the boring recipe. I add a bit of chili powder along with frog's breath. Maybe prapika. Is it in the hot is sauce? Is it French? Yeah, it's not in French, I know, isn't but it? see, or is uh, it? I don't know, see... You, like, this is one of those cultural things that are gypsy French? I don't know. In truth, every time I try to do an accent, it usually sounds up Russian or German. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, I'm not good at accents. Well, is it German? Because any pony wants uh, which boring flavor to serve break. Uh, I don't know. See, like, it's one of those things where it's up for interpretation and whatnot, but I know what Andy Price was going for. He's going for the... Um, accent pony and whatnot, but for this one, I don't think it works because of his writing style, which is wall of text. Well, first time writer, everyone tends to overdo it. Brevity is the soul of wit and all that good yeah, stuff. True, true. But back to the princesses and the berries. Hmm. After Crystal Ball has pretty much ruined their plans, or at least created, created hindrance by amplifying their aggression. They'll, the plan is that they'll depower themselves with the berries, then have some berries with uh, an empowerment potion. So basically, this is a short time depowerment, not unlike the Black Panther, which I just saw yesterday. So that's fresh yeah, in my same mind. Yeah, same here, same here. But then Tiberius and Philomena start an argument. They're picking up on Celestia and Luna's uh, hostility and rivalry. And so, basically, that leads us right to where the comic started. Mm, true that, and yeah, it's 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 one it's an interesting way to start the comic, but I don't know. It's just the way that it's presented. But I do like this line, Your Majesty. You shall not light yourself on fire against your own sister. I feel that is a given, and also the only time that sentence has ever been uttered. Well, I don't know. Maybe there's a very pyrotechnic kingdom out there. <laughs> I don't you never know. know. But still, yes. Once you broke it down, 
now I get it. Like the berries make the ponies aggressive. And I honestly did not pick that up. I, I got no idea. It's hard when the story jumps time frames. We're not seeing necessarily the linear progression. We're seeing it in bits and pieces. It makes it interesting to reread, but it's a little hard on the first go or even the second. But you know, honestly, I don't really see that because the way that the story is told is pretty linear. You have the false start, then into the real start, and continue or the story picks up where it left off. So it wasn't that bad. I think personally for me, what confused me was the gypsy part here because I read through everything again and this gypsy part here broke down for me. Like I got no idea what were, what was even going on. I think the whole kibitz part here was the part where you really need to focus or really need to read an FAQ of what's going on to understand. Or you have me on hand. Oh, yes, thank play. you for that too. I'm relevant! Huzzah! Yes, thank you for that too. But you know what? I'm going to sidetrack for a minute and say that this all could have been avoided. How so? I don't know if it's me or the fan fiction, but there's... Maybe it's in fan fiction or comics, or uh, unofficial comics, but there's the ring where you put on the unicorn's horn to depower them so they cannot use their horn to activate their powers. There's that option there. Why not use that? They're bigger than your average earth pony, and it's implied that they have greater strength as a result, and plus bigger wings. This is to depower them in all aspects, not just magic. Uh, yeah, probably. I, I don't know. It's just messy. Then again, uh... One does not want to walk around with uh, a depowering ring on their head saying, hey, enemies, come at me, it's yo. It's for the event, but still, it's one of those things where it's a bit messy and unclear. So, mm, I don't know. Okay, maybe maybe it's the demissioning. Okay, I think wording is also here too. Uh, still, like I mentioned before, it's one of those pet peeves or it's one of those things where if you don't really read the whole thing right you won't understand and i guess i was that i didn't read it right but anywho you we left off with back to the intro and kibitz having the best line in the sh comics oh about the light lighting yourself yes, a flame. to me that was fun and this big event starts in just a few short hours as a as a uh night guard shows the royal guard's dedication by napping on the job and he's a bat pony he shouldn't be sleeping well, I imagine it's a very boring job. Wait, is he a bad pony or just a night guard pony? I, I forgot. Because by the looks of it, it's well, bad he, ponies, but... Well, the night guard look like bad ponies, but no one is... They, they've never really explored the idea that bat ponies might be at their own breed of Pegasi. In truth, it might just be Luna likes to style up her, her guard. Yeah, unless said otherwise, then yeah. Uh, but anywho, let's continue on with the comics because, well... The sisters get into an argument, and you know what? Kabit says, you go left, you go right. Separate, now. And it's very rare that you can actually uh, tell the princesses to go to their rooms. <laughs> yes. It shows the power of uh, Kibitz. Yep. Uh, but still, uh, Celestia's thinking that, why are we arguing this much? Like, we argue and we are competitive, but never to this extent. That's strange. And Luna is doing the same thing too. And once they bump into each other, they, well, uh, almost start a fight. And they notice that, oh no, the event, we're going to be late. Let's go. And Kabit says, I shall bring the big goods to you. No problem. And upon their rush, uh, Kabit noticed that eh, the princess forget to feed their pets. Okay, uh, this berries. Why not I give some of this to their pets? These are the empowerment strawberries. Not clear at all. Not clear at all. You know what Kibitz should have done, Silver? Uh, made them food? No, scan them. Scan those berries. Oh, yeah, get with the <laughs> scanning. Next you'll be complaining about watching Blacklist and uh, ordering a pizza on the job. Oh, having a pizza guy doing no job of me. <sighs> again, again, to our dear confused listeners... Go to Neebs Gaming, N W E B S, and watch their Subnautica series. You'll get the jokes and have uh, a grand time. I it's think. fun. 
I I love listening <laughs> to it. <laughs> uh, but anywho, back on topic. We are we are now reveal what the event is. The sister of social. What? We have Rarity and, and Sweetie Belle providing exposition that once again San Palomino comes up. Yep. Too bad for Applejack that she's not in this event. If not, <laughs> yeah. And Scootaloo and Rainbow Dash are forgotten and left cold in the wilderness. <laughs> yeah. Although I do have to call foul. Granny Smith and and Big Mac should get a refund for that banner. Apple, Apple Acres presents. Uh, yeah. Notice there's a word yeah, missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or did the banner maker say we couldn't fit <laughs> That's it all what in. she said. Hi oh. <laughs> also part of these gaming. <laughs> Blacklist. <laughs> uh, but anywho, continue back on track. Uh, criticism for this one: the big event. What a letdown. Really, I love the sister. Oh, of social. I, I, I mean, it's, I love the sister of social, but it, why made it so mysterious and so? Ah, oh, I mean, just say that they're going to participate in the sister of social. It's not that big of a surprise. Like, it'll get us more excited if we know what the event is because oh, they're sisters. They're going to the sister of social. This is their first time going. Oh my god, it's gonna be so awesome! But no, it's gonna be the big event. Like, they're going to the big event. The greatest event in the history of eventations. Personally for me, this, to me here, feels like overhyping something that is not huge. You know what I mean? I know what you mean. But it's a chance for them to do something as sisters together, yeah. which normally the only shared activity they get is getting kidnapped. <laughs> uh, so true. But, like, hiding the fact that they're going to the sister who's social makes it a bit... Oh, it's just a sister of social. Okay, the big event is not really that big. Like for me personally, they should have gone with the whole, they're going to the sister of social. That way, we'll get more excited because hey, Celeste and Luna are going to their first sister of social together. This is going to be so awesome. Yay! But that's just me, I don't know. I think you highly enjoy this one, like the way that they reveal this. Well, I like that in the midst of protecting dreams and having huge diplomatic missions, their greatest excitement is to actually just com- take part in an event together. So I like the the human element, for lack of a better term. Oh, I agree. I, I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Yeah, I can see that. It's the normality of things. Like, you're a pop star. You eat high-class food. It'll be nice once in a while to eat that the in and out burger. Or just hang out with friends and not have to make a big, uh, big to-do about yeah, everything. True that, true that. But getting back to our uh, main stars, Luna and Celestia are bickering while they fly to Ponyville. Oh, yeah. And they almost start a ruckus because everybody was shocked with what they're saying. La gasp. Oh, shock and awe. My, my jimmies are rustled. Oh, no. Blacklist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lucas was much better. <laughs> but anywho. Then we start basically the, the, the mini civil war. Oh, yeah. I gotta say, it's a little cruel to have Luna put her face behind Nightmare Moon's cutout. I mean, that's just insensitive. Yeah, but I think that, uh, what you gonna call this, Luna didn't sign up for this. <laughs> At least it's Cherry, which, good good thing Big Macintosh isn't here. He oh, hates yeah. Cherry Pie. And still, uh, their competitive streak goes, uh, is dialing up slowly to a 30 and Rarity sees something wrong or something's amiss, while Sweetie Belle here doesn't really care. She's just in for the fun. Can we just say that during the race after a hypnotism routine, we have perhaps the greatest image of Celestia since she did that. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we get chicken Lestia. So, uh, and what's the keyword again, Silver? Go. <laughs> I just love the expression of rarities like, oh my god, that's not, oh. Highly inappropriate. I can only imagine what kibitz oh, would be. Yeah. But still, um, Celestia and Luna are almost at odds with each other and they decide to switch sisters. So Celestia speaking with, or Celestia siding with Sweetie Belle while Rarity is siding with herself. I mean, Celestia, uh, Celestia, Rarity is siding with Luna. Yes. 
Yes, voice actresses unite. <laughs> I do love the image that poor Sweetie Belle can't even get on the ground. Oh, uh, yeah. She's like, that's cheating. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, they, they, they argue and whatnot. And Rarity is trying to um, calm them down by saying, remember way back when in season two when we write the letters to you guys about being sisters and whatnot? Yeah, this applies here. You guys should not uh, fight. Oh yeah, Celestia, it's always apple pie with that one. <laughs> yeah. And suddenly Big Giant Possum and Phoenix. <laughs> Just when we're 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 all expecting Pacific Rim too. Want to see the giant monsters, but just to tide you over, here's a kaiju, uh, Tiberius and Philomena. Da 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 da. Oh no. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Oh, I love I love monster yeah. movies. Ah, uh, but anywho. Uh, while the possums and phoenix are destroying Ponyville, once again, uh, the sisters try to do something. They try to do something. To be- Meanwhile, as they're trying to chase after these things, poor Rarity and Sweetie Belle. But Rarity's about ready to puke, and Sweetie Belle's down for the oh, count. Yeah. They're out of it. And yeah, they, they, they try to calm the pets down by saying, Hey, pets, follow us. There's a big giant pie over here. Uh, please stop saying pie. We have to go stop them. What? <laughs> stop saying that. Go. Uh, so, basically, now they're in a 16 hoof race. Yeah. 16? Oh, wow. Well, four, four by four? Uh, yeah, it's 16. Actually 12. Well, there's, well, there's four know, of them. I know, but you have to minus... Uh, some hoof because it's a six on six. Like, yeah, uh, they share. They yeah. share. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of them, so they actually fly in tandem just to get up and talk to yep. these things. Well, the pets are eating the big giant pie. Celestia and Luna decides, "Hey, you know who will be great for this? Uh, Crystal Ball. Her powers will do something to the pets, and with that, they do the force sleep." And yay, that'll be awesome. And it should be noted that uh, there was a sign earlier saying, see Equestria's largest pie. I understand the the criticism that uh, Andy Price is throwing a lot and it's hard to keep track of it all. But when you go back and read, you see everything that comes into play was hinted at the beginning the with foreshadowing. The big pie was there. I, I noticed that. Uh, my, my problem is with the berries. That's about it, man. Uh, but besides that... Uh, Pets are asleep because Crystal Ball hypnotized them somehow. And they apparently decimated the entire North Wing uh, yeah. on their way out of the castle. I do not even want to know what happened. And with that, Kabitz comes in to give Celestia and Luna the empowering berries. And things seem to be going back to normal. Yeah. And once again, the two sisters learn their lesson. They do fight a lot, but hey... Our differences makes us whole. That's right. And then, of course, Sweetie Belle has to uh, kill the mood with a gag face, which, given that she's been hoisted and carried and thrown about and she had 14 cotton candies, uh, yeah, I can understand that she's feeling a little queasy. Though if it's a PDA that really drives her over the wall, well, that's just too bad. You can handle some mushiness. Your your sister's with rarity. Yeah, but still. Uh but I do like the next panel here where uh, Philomena is playing with Luna and Tiberius is playing with Celestia. And yeah, these sisters are getting to know the pets, uh, each other's pets. And yay, they're, they're one happy family. So that's much fun. And then even Tiberius gives Philomena a flower. And Sudi Bell says, that's crazy. We don't say crazy with royalty. It's being eccentric. <laughs> yeah. Which makes me think of Rat Race. <laughs> I'm eccentric. <laughs> uh, and we do see the main five plus Spike coming back to try and save Equestria. They say, Princess, what in tarnation happened? What caused that trail from here to Cantalot? Meteor? Dragons? Aliens? Possum? Oh sure, blame the possum, not the phoenix. Yeah, because the possum's dragging itself on the ground because the phoenix flying. Eh. You know, supersonic winds, giant gales from those wing beats. 
I also love that Granny Smith, who was snatched up by Tiberius during this kerfuffle, is still on the roof, and she's just napping it off like it ain't no thing. Oh, yeah, she's used to this by now. It, as a resident of Ponyville, this is probably just a regular Tuesday. Oh, yeah, true that. <laughs> Make that a Thursday if Discord's involved. Yeah, so Monday, giant swarm invades. Tuesday, giant monster invades. Wednesday, Twilight does something wrong. Thursday, one of the ma- one of her friends does something wrong. Friday's a holiday. <laughs> Friday, Friday, <laughs> gotta get down on Friday. Uh, but still, and with that, the comic ends, and Celestia breaks the fourth wall. And gets a one-up on Pinky. And I know, you know what? I, I think everybody here is trying to break the fourth wall. Twilight, Rainbow Dash. You know, I, I think just Twilight, Rainbow, and Luna... While the rest are just acting normal. And Pinky's just going, Who are you talking to? And episode of End Comic Ends. Comic Ends. Series ends and I'm sad. Because I, I love Friends Forever. It's so much fun. Let's go to Final Thoughts. Let's all go to the movies. Oh wait, we did that yesterday. What Final Thoughts? Final Thoughts. What do you think, man? Well, let's see. This is fun one. I hear, I hear what you say. That there are walls of text and there are so many components to what is basically a comedy of errors that it can be hard to to track it all and take it all in it this is a comic that would require several read-throughs just to get it all straight but i do love it when i get to see celestia and luna being themselves showing that they're not just these cookie cutter fairy tale princesses they have their own foibles quirks and issues and they work through them this was way before a royal problem came to the forefront. So that's a, a joy in and of itself. So I enjoy it. I think it's fun. I think it's a fun way to close it out. I wouldn't put it at like the best of the Friends Forever line, but it's definitely one that I think shows more strengths than weaknesses. Mm, true that, true that. And as for me, this comic was... A f- mm. Here's where I have issues. I like this comic. Problem is the writing... The art from Andy Price is always marvelous, but the writing just kills it for me. I, I, I don't know what to say because I enjoyed this comic. This comic was fun, but the writing here, it just brings me down to a point where I could take it or leave it. But it's Celestia and Luna, so you want to enjoy it. And my whole problem with this one has been the writing, the wall of text, the convoluted or the complicated ways that Andy Price is trying to set up the scenario here. And the berries, like, what? And you know what? Remember last week when we talked about the potion, how Zakura didn't have a label and Rarity should have scanned it? Yes. Oh, scanning. Oh, is it the scan? You're always <laughs> wanting to scan something. <laughs> yeah. Same problem here, but done clumsily. We're going to have to get everyone listening to this podcast on a Subnautica kick, just so they can <laughs> understand the, the source of your joy. I joy! Know. But still... Frowny face. <laughs> but still, it's not clear. Like, to me here, the berries here were kind... For me, it was the... Uh, what you gonna call this? Um, red herring? Well, red herring is usually meant to distract you from the true cause. These berries were the source of much of the conflict, but it's hard to know what they were really about. Yeah, and to me, that's what I mean by red herring, because, oh, these are the magical berries. Yes, we sh- to me, it was like, we should use them in our dessert or cookies, whatever it is. Yes, because why would you need a berry, or what, why would you need berries to depower yourself? Couldn't a potion do it? You see what I mean here? Or you could wear a depowering ring, but then that just then we started to get into uh, cat noir <laughs> levels of awkwardness. So don't wear that in public. What are you doing? Yeah, but see, there's multiple ways to solve said problem with at least a visual aid. You know what I mean? Mm. But uh, I don't know. Like I like this comic, but I find so many problems with it, and. You know me, Silver, we've been doing the Friends Forever for 38 episodes now. And I think this is the only time I had problems with the comics. And in every series, there will be that one, that that episode or that issue that just doesn't work. Yeah, and I try, I'm trying so hard to like this one. But 
the writing just kills it for me. Like, I hate saying that. I, I really hate saying that. But the writing just kills it for me. Well, then at least this wouldn't be the only uh, princess duet. Mm. When's the next one? Legends of Magic number one. Ah, yes, that one, yes. Funny enough, is more about the princesses than it was Star Swirl the Bearded. Ah, uh, true that. But anywho, with that, I think that's our review, right? It is our review, but now we must turn our eyes forward while also looking backward. It's a bit cross-eyed. True. And even though Friends Forever has ended, that doesn't mean we need to end it now. Next review, well, besides the whole episode review, uh, we're going to do a top 10. And said top 10 is our personal favorites Friends Forever issue. Join us for that one to see what we think of said comics. Are we going to list them by issues or by our least favorite to favorite? Hmm. I think going 10 to 1, basically. So start with the bottom of our, our top 10 and then move upwards. And I guess you say least favorite. Should we have a, a placeholder for our least favorite issue of the series? Well, it's the, we have 38 issues here. So let's just say that number 10 is not the best but it's still best out of 38 yes so our top 10 lists are going to be recommended but uh, they're not strong personally for me if i were to put my number 10 probably it will be 38 art's good concept is good writing's not there i need to rethink my list actually uh more research we're kind of thinking out, out loud right now yeah but still that's going to be next week's problem future us problem yay Future us, but now, but then we will be future us, and then that will be weird. Yeah, but anyway, Silver, what are we going to do next week? Next week, well, we've we just reviewed it isn't the main thing about you for our last episode, which means a health of information is on the horizon as Akura starts to turn into a tree, Fluttershy works herself to exhaustion, and Twilight wants breakfast. Yeah, and that will be episode twenty of season seven, and. A health of information. That's what you said, right? That's what I said. Mm -hmm. So that'll be next week's thing. That's going to be very, very interesting. Oh, wow. We after that, we have six episodes away to the end of season seven. And well, season eight is around the corner, actually. What? Going to be on March 24th? Fourth, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, well, we'll need to just chat about that but that's something for either the patreon subscribers or for just for us to know oh yeah 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 oh, oh, oh. there's a lot of things to be said about season eight one thing i can say is season eight holds the record for getting spoiled oh so many leaks so many early airings and double features oh yeah season eight <laughs> but anywho if you guys at home would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com and coffee.com. With every support, you'll get early access to the review and discussion podcast. That's a week early access, by the way. And exclusive and deleted contents. Exclusive will be things that we, well, the Patreon people get to hear while the normal folks don't. <laughs> and a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I like to thank Lurka, Cat, Starstream, Master of Lag, Amy, Mark, Charles, Lucky Knight, and also our newest patron supporter, Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You have been really, really awesome. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vaquil. And we'll guys catch you next week with another episode of the MBS show. See ya. All here, Luna! <laughs> so, whose bright idea was it not to label those berries? Apparently the same person who didn't label Zakura's uh, bottles. Apparently there's just, maybe there's an anti-label spirit running around Equestria. You know what they should have done, Silver? Ah? Scan it. Scan it! Smiley face! <laughs> Get that emoji off the screen. Oh, come on, passenger 00FU. Zero, zero,